Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14 says, since the children have flesh and blood, here he's talking in the context of how through Jesus, God has brought sons and daughters into his family. And so they're the children he's talking about. Since the children have flesh and blood, he, Jesus too, shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it's not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. Well, here we are at Christmas 2020. And what a year it has been, hey? A year that has confronted us with various limitations of our human experience, various challenges that we face by being human. We had drought, which we couldn't really solve because we couldn't make it rain. We had bushfires, which we can't really control. We can't put them out and so often we can't control them at all. We had protests about racism, showing that humanity was sort of one of the evidences of humanity not being able to work together very well. And then significantly throughout the year, so much of our year has been impacted by COVID-19, hasn't it? The threat threat of a life-threatening illness. Uh, We've faced the difficulty of getting hold of things. You go to the shops and it wasn't there because people decided to buy it all up and so you couldn't get pasta and you couldn't get toilet paper. We faced restrictions to our relationships. We wanted to catch up with people. We weren't about to interact with people. And they said, no, you can't do that the way that you had intended to do or the way you want to do. We faced the uncertainty about, well, what's it going to be like? Where's it going to go? What's going to happen tomorrow or next week? We've had plans that we've made which haven't come about. They've been upset. They've been thwarted and we've had to adjust. And through all of it, we've had kind of the fatigue of this constant change, trying to grapple with where's it going, what's happening, and that even the little parts of life just get more complicated. Just going to the shops is more complicated. Do I need a mask? Do I not need a mask? I've got to sign in. I've got to whatever. It's all. And and with this fatigue, we get this frustration and this tension that starts to develop in our relationships because fatigue and stress never bring out the best in us, do they? And we start to feel that tension. So many ways in which our humanity has been revealed throughout this year. The limitations, the the difficulties. This pandemic uh, hits us with with the reality of those limitations. It hits us also with the the fear of death. Maybe you haven't personally sort of felt that fear of death. It seems maybe a bit far away, but we see how people respond. This kind of irrationality that causes them to panic by and causes them to do all sorts of things. Because this, this fear of the the uncontrollable, that potentially has life-threatening impacts. COVID-19, of course, has even impacted our Christmas celebrations. We wanted to have a service where we could sing Christmas carols and we couldn't do it. Just last week, we were able to have 70 people in this building. Now we can only have 38. Uh, Some of you have probably, like our family, we made plans for Christmas. We were going to do things with family or with friends and that's been changed. We can't do it anymore. It's not just 2020, is it? We think about the limitations of humanity. We think about the experiences of journeying in this world. It's not just this year. It's every year. It's all of life, isn't it? It's not just one pandemic. It's lost and missed opportunities that we experience through life. We all know the challenge of frailty, of illness, of weakness, of pain that comes with age, that comes with loss. It comes with sickness, perhaps comes with mental illness. We know experiences of injustice. Perhaps we've ex- been the, the recipient of bullying or uh, um, conflict in our marriage, in our family, in our school, in our workplace. We just live with the deterioration, the decay of pretty much everything, don't we? Everything wears out. Nothing lasts forever. And we have all sorts of experiences and situations that kind of weren't what we thought they'd be. We end up with disappointment over what could be. What are you wrestling with? 
What's, what's been significant in your life, the challenges that just reveals to you this is the difficulty of being human, this is the, the, the limitations that we live with. What are you wrestling with now? Maybe you think, Steve, this is all pretty negative story for Christmas. I thought we were supposed to be here to celebrate. But and yes, there are positives. There are joys that we can celebrate in life. And it's good to take time to celebrate those. And it's good to take time to reflect on those and be thankful for it. But the, the challenges, the struggles are unavoidable. And we've been confronted with that this year, haven't we? This year more than most. Does Christmas solve the challenges? Here we are at Christmas. Let's just, what do we do? Bury our head in the sand and just rejoice? Um, does Christmas solve the challenges? Well, let's just think about general Australian celebration of Christmas and what that means. Just kind of take God out of the picture and what is it? It's about gifts, it's about decorations, it's about celebrations with family or friends, it's about goodwill, it's about holidays. They're the things that we associate with Christmas, don't we? Do they, do they solve the problem? Well, yeah, there's lots of joy, isn't there? There's lots of these things that we do because we enjoy them and they bring us a sense of happiness. But they don't overcome all the other challenges, do they? They don't make them all evaporate. And in fact, too often it is in such experiences that we even see the tension and we see the limitation. Perhaps some of you know that as you gather family together or you just try and gather family together, it reveals some of the tension of that. So and so doesn't get on with such and such. We hope this would go out this way and yet we find that when we all got together it actually didn't work out so well. And sometimes maybe we kind of chuckle at that. It's like, well, it's kind of a little bit funny but other times it just makes us cry, doesn't it? It just really hurts us that, that things don't work out. Or we make plans for Christmas. We're going to have this holiday. We're going to get together like this and then it doesn't work because COVID comes in and says, no, you can't actually meet the way you wanted to. You can't go there. You're not allowed to travel there. And we struggle with that. We're just out of control. We're not in control of everything. Does the celebration of Christmas solve everything? No, sometimes it just reveals the challenges. So what about the Christian message of Christmas? A baby born in a manger, a baby born in the stable. Does that solve the problem? It's not just cute. Nice little baby, we know you see the little nativity scenes all clean, it's pretty, it's put it on a Christmas card and send it as a message of goodwill. It's not just cute, it's not just nice, it's not just safe. There's so much more to that message of, G of, of Jesus coming as a baby. See, Christmas marks the coming of God into our world. And if you're familiar with church circles, we use the term in Emmanuel. We've sang it, I think we saw it in a couple of the songs. Emmanuel means God with us. That's what we celebrate at Christmas, God actually coming into our world in the person of Jesus. Another word we use is incarnation. It's the idea of God taking on flesh, becoming human. A baby isn't just cute. It's as a, the verses that I read just before, it is God sharing in our humanity. Sharing in our humanity. God was free of all the limitations that I've just expressed. All, all those challenges and struggles that we, that we experience that are part of our daily lives, he didn't have any of it. Jesus was in heaven with God, experiencing his glory, enjoying his glory, enjoying the harmony and the fellowship with God the Father. It was all perfect. It was all wonderful. And that was his experience. He, free of those things we wrestle with. And yet he chose willingly to come and to bear it for our sake. To come and actually be a human. So I'm going to take on that wrestle, that struggle, all that difficulty that is your experience. He does it for our sake. And so he comes to be born. He comes, he's born into lowly circumstances. He comes to, to live, to grow up in that sort of lowly setting. He goes through the challenges of adolescence and sort of growing into to adulthood. He experiences the positives and the negatives of life. The, the, the challenges with family, the positives and the negatives with friends, the, with enemies. He, would have, he had enemies. He, he knew the experience of work. He had to journey through sexual temptation. He had to journey through betrayal and through hostility and the grief that is so much of life. 
the challenges of going without. He journeyed through it all, like we do. And he did it not because we deserved him to do it. Like as if we're just somehow worth it, that of course he would do it. No, we didn't deserve him to do it at all. Our human struggle is because we live in a world that has been broken and uh, overwhelmed by sin. That, that humanity decided to reject God's rule and say, no, actually, we'd like to rule ourselves. We'd like to put ourselves on the throne and, God, you can just kind of take a bit of a back seat because we, we're going to call the sh- shots and we're going to run the show. And, and when we do that, the wheels fall off. And it's not to say that every hardship that we experience is somehow directly tied to some particular sin or some particular shortcoming. We shouldn't make that connection, that would be unhelpful. Sometimes they are. Sometimes we actually bear the brunt of our own um, wrong actions and wrong choices. And we should own up to that, we should seek forgiveness for it, and we should try and put things right. But very often the hardships that we face are just part of the general reality of living in a fallen world. A world that is that in this state of fallenness because of the introduction of sin. And we see that everywhere, don't we? we? We feel, we experience the reality of a broken world everywhere we look. And I've shared a number of aspects in which that plays itself out. And that's what Jesus experienced. That's what he experiences. He becomes a human and he walks our journey. And he experiences it to the fullest because he was so set on following the Father's plan. He did that perfectly. And so all the hostility, all the resistance against God, everyone who wants to sort of dethrone God and put themselves on the throne, they therefore butted up against Jesus because he was perfectly following where, Jesus, where God wanted him to go. And so he did that so as to rescue us, so as to endure the ultimate penalty that is the, 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 the result of sin and dethroning God. And that's what we read. This is the children have flesh and blood. He too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. He came to set us free. That's why Christmas is such great news. Not just because it's a time to celebrate, have parties, that's fun. And not just because it's a time to get together with family, that's nice too. And it's really great news because he comes to set us free. We've had to move, uh, our family's had to move a number of times throughout our, um, our married life in particular. Um, and most of the time when we've moved, uh, we've done it ourselves. Saves money that way and we just get stuck into it. One of the times we moved, was after, after I'd finished studying for the ministry and we were moving from uh, Geelong into Melbourne so as to uh, undergo a sort of internship. And uh, we kind of underestimated it a little bit in terms of what was involved in moving from Geelong to Melbourne with all the traffic and everything. And so it, it just blew out. And so uh, this, this um, friends of ours... Um, bit younger than we are, I'd actually taught some of them in, uh, in, in catechism class, but uh, they offered to help us out. They lived in Melbourne, they said, when you get here, uh, we'll help you unload. Well, the day was dragging on, it was getting later and later, and I said, this is not really going to work. So I, uh, I rang them and I said, look, it's getting late, it's, it's like already, I think it was sort of 11 or 12 o'clock at night by the time we were leaving Geelong, I said, it's going to be too late for you. They said, no, we'll be there, you let us know when you arrive and we'll help you out. So I think it was by the time, it was a bit nearly two o'clock in the morning. There we were, unloading the last load and sticking it in the shed. They were there with us. It spoke volumes to us that they were willing to be there at two o'clock in the morning, helping us to unload. Well, even more so when it comes to Jesus. We go through all sorts of challenges. We go through all sorts of struggles in life and we tend to want God to fix them. We go, God, just come and solve this problem. Take the problem away. Otherwise, perhaps he doesn't care. Otherwise, perhaps we start to think, well, maybe he doesn't really love us that much. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm going through because he hasn't fixed this problem. But he does care. He does know. He does understand because he walked with us. He came into our world. He lived our struggles. And as we come to him with our struggles, which he invites us to, He says, I know. 
I know about the pain. I, I know about the rejection. I know about the grief. I know about what it is to be betrayed because I've journeyed that. I came alongside you. I walk with you. That's the wonderful message of Christmas. There are lots of wonderful aspects to the message. That's what I want us to reflect on this morning, that he shared in our humanity. He actually came into our lives, not because we deserved him to, because he chose to. And it's a, it's, it's a remarkable, I'm sure I haven't done it justice, that, that the, the, the God of the universe decided to come and be a person and walk alongside us. And so as we interact with him about the challenges, he says, I've got, I've got bigger plans for you that I'm working on. I'm not just going to take all the challenges away. I've got bigger plans that you don't know, which you don't understand. But I know this is hard. I've journeyed it with you. Think about his lowly birth. Born in a stable. Think about the, the, the life that he grew up. He wasn't a king in a palace. He, he lived an, a very ordinary life. And then we see it confronted the most as he's trying to pursue God's will for him. And he sits in the Garden of Gethsemane praying to God. And he says, Lord, if there is any other way, take this away from me as he's heading to the cross. And God says, no, there is no other way. This is how it has to be. Yes, it's been a tough year. 2020 has been a tough year and even our celebration, our reflection of Christmas has been impacted by it. And yet, the message of Christmas is just what we need. God shares in our experiences. God shares in our struggles as he comes to provide the real answer to those. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful reality. Maybe for many of us, Christmas that comes around every year, we've, we've heard the message so often and it seems familiar. Lord, please shake that, break that familiarity. Help us to, to, to capture the wonder of the fact that you entered our world, you walked alongside us, you journeyed our journey and then you did what we couldn't possibly do. You took the penalty that we deserve so that we might have the prospect of the, the glory and of relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, in, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Well, we do have an opportunity.